I wanted to take a few moments to thank all of you who've reached out to me about the death of my mom, Gloria Vanderbilt. Your cards and emails, your texts and DMs on Instagram and tweets have truly meant a lot. My mom would be stunned by all the attention and the kind words that have been written and spoken about her. I know this because when I got her to join Instagram when she was like 92 or so, she didn't think that anyone would actually follow her. Why would anyone be interested, she asked. Well, it wasn't long before she had some 200,000 followers, and I gotta tell you, it tickled her beyond belief. I can't believe it, she would say, and she would email me constantly and sort of annoyingly about what she should post or what pictures to post or what she should say about them or what she should name a painting she was about to finish. Mary Gordon, uh, the author, wrote that a fatherless girl thinks all things possible and nothing safe. Well, that's how my mom felt her entire life. Nothing ever felt safe to her, but anything was possible terrible tragedies and glorious surprises. But she never let that feeling of insecurity stop her. She never let fear or pain or loss prevent her from forging ahead, from moving forward. She always believed the best was yet to come. My mom found out June 8th that she had cancer. She lived nine more days. Friends came to see her. She laughed a lot. She saw her family and her nurses cared for her with true love and affection. It was the best end possible to her remarkable life. Being able to spend those nine days and nights with her was a great, great blessing. They were the most extraordinary days of my life, and I'm very grateful. She died Monday shortly after 4 a.m., and though I was holding her hand and her head when she took her last breath, it's still a little hard for me to believe she's gone. One of her friends explained her sadness by describing my mom as her North Star the person she used as a guide, a kind of light in the darkness. I never realized until now how much she was my North Star as well. And right now, things seem a lot less bright and magical without her. My dad died when I was 10, and my brother when I, when I was 21. She was the last of my immediate family, the last person who knew me from the beginning. They're all gone, and it feels very lonely right now. I hope they are at least together. I've said before that I often thought of my mom as a voyager from a distant galaxy who was stranded here, unable to return to the place and time in which she was born. I always tried to protect her, but couldn't do that very well when I was 10 or even 20. But I'm happy that I was able to help make the latter years of her life comfortable and fulfilling. When I die, that might be the thing I'm most proud of. I'm happy that we left nothing unsaid between us. She knew me. And I knew her, and there was great comfort in that. You and I, it's a match made in heaven, she said to me last week. We're a good team, I told her. We stayed up late that night just holding hands, and when she got sleepy and I got ready to leave, she said to me, what a wonderful night. And it was, perhaps our best. She liked me to play this video of a Peggy Lee song on YouTube. It's called, Is That All There Is? We'd sing along to this chorus. Is that all there is? If that's all there is, my friends, then let's keep dancing. Let's break out the booze and have a ball. If that's all there is. I'd hold my mom's hand while we were singing and move it back and forth as though we were dancing, having a ball. Let's break out the booze and have a ball. If that's all they Every time it ended, my mom would say, isn't that marvelous? She'd be smiling. And it was. With her, with my mom, it was marvelous.